Euclid's Element. Book 1. Definitions. A point is an indivisible location with no width, length, and breadth. A line is a geometric element with only length, but with no breadth. The ends of a line are points. A straight line is a line on which points can be evenly constructed. A surface is a geometric element with length and breadth only. The edges of a surface are lines. A plane surface is a surface on which straight lines can be evenly constructed. A plane angle is the inclination to one another of two lines in a plane which meet one another and do not lie in a straight line. When the lines containing the angle are straight, the angle is called rectilinear angle. When a straight line set upon a straight line makes the adjacent angles equal to one another, each of the equal angles is called right angle, and the straight line standing on the other is called a perpendicular to that on which it stands. An obtuse angle is an angle greater than a right angle. An acute angle is an angle less than a right angle. A boundary is an extremity of anything. A figure is that which is contained by any boundary or boundaries. A circle is a plane figure contained by one line such that all the straight lines falling upon it from one point among those lying within the figure are equal to one another. And the point is called the center of the circle. A diameter of the circle is any straight line drawn through the center and terminated in both directions by the circumference of the circle, and such a straight line also bisects the circle. A semicircle is the figure contained by the diameter and the circumference cut off by it. And the center of the semicircle is the same as that of the circle. Rectilinear figures are those which are contained by straight lines, trilateral figures being those contained by three, quadrilateral those contained by four, and multilateral those contained by more than four straight lines. Of trilateral figures, an equilateral triangle is that which has its three sides equal, an isosceles triangle that which has two of its sides alone equal, and a scaling triangle that which has its three sides unequal. Further, of trilateral figures, a right-angled triangle is that which has a right angle, an obtuse angled triangle that which has an obtuse angle, and an acute angled triangle that which has its three angles acute. Of quadrilateral figures, a square is that which is both equilateral and right angled, an oblong that which is right angled but not equilateral, a rhombus that which is equilateral but not right angled, and a rhomboid that which has its opposite sides and angles equal to one another but is neither equilateral nor right angled. And let quadrilaterals other than these be called trapezia. Parallel straight lines are straight lines which, being in the same plane and being produced indefinitely in both directions, do not meet one another in either direction. Euclid's Element, Book 1 Postulates To draw a straight line from any point to any point To produce a finite straight line continuously in a straight line To describe a circle with any center and distance That all right angles are equal to one another That if a straight line falling on two straight lines make the interior angles on the same side less than two right angles, the two straight lines, if produced indefinitely, meet on that side on which are the angles less than the two right angles. Euclid's Element, Book 1 Common Notions Things which are equal to the same thing are also equal to one another. If equals be added to equals, the wholes are equal. If equals be subtracted from equals, the remainders are equal. Things which coincide with one another are equal to one another. The whole is greater than the part. Euclid's Element, Book 1 Propositions Proposition 1 On a given finite straight line to construct an equilateral triangle. Let AB be the given finite straight line. Thus it is required to construct an equilateral triangle on the straight line AB. With center A, and distance AB, 
let the circle BCD be described. By Book 1 Postulate 3. Again, with center B, and distance BA, let the circle ACE be described. By Book 1 Postulate 3. And from the point C, in which, the circles cut one another, to the points A, B. Let the straight line CA, CB, be joined. By Book 1 Postulate 1. Now, since the point A is the center of the circle CDB, AC is equal to AB. By Book 1 Definition 15. Again, since the point B is the center of the circle CAE, BC is equal to BA. By Book 1 Definition 15. But CA was also proved equal to AB, therefore each of the straight lines CA, CB, is equal to AB. And things which are equal to the same thing are also equal to one another. By Book 1 Common Notion 1. Therefore CA is also equal to CB. Therefore the three straight lines CA, AB, BC, are equal to one another. Therefore the triangle ABC is equilateral, and it has been constructed on the given finite straight line AB. Being, what it was required to do. Proposition 2. To place at a given point, as an extremity, a straight line equal to a given straight line. Let A be the given point, and B C the given straight line. Thus it is required to place at the point A, as an extremity, a straight line equal to the given straight line B C. From the point A to the point B, let the straight line A B be joined. By Book 1 Postulate 1. And on it, let the equilateral triangle DAB be constructed. By Book 1 Proposition 1. Let the straight lines AE, BF, be produced in a straight line with DA, DB. By Book 1 Postulate 2. With center B and distance BC, let the circle CGH be described. By Book 1 Postulate 3. And again, with center D and distance DG, let the circle GKL be described. By Book 1 Postulate 3. Then, since the point B is the center of the circle CGH, BC is equal to BG. Again, since the point D is the center of the circle GKL, DL is equal to DG. And in these DA is equal to DB, therefore the remainder AL is equal to the remainder BG. By Book 1 Common Notion 3. But BC was also proved equal to BG, therefore each of the straight lines AL, BC, is equal to BG. And things which are equal to the same thing are also equal to one another. By Book 1 Common Notion 1. Therefore AL is also equal to BC. Therefore at the given point A, the straight line AL is placed equal to the given straight line BC. Being, what it was required to do. Proposition 3. Given two unequal straight lines, to cut off from the greater a straight line equal to the less. Let AB, C, be the two given unequal straight lines, and let AB be the greater of them. Thus it is required to cut off from AB the greater a straight line equal to C the less. At the point A, let AD be placed, equal to the straight line C. By Book 1 Proposition 2. And with center A, and distance AD, let the circle DEF be described. By Book 1 Postulate 3. Now, since the point A is the center of the circle DEF, AE is equal to AD. By Book 1 Definition 15. But C, is also equal to AD. Therefore each of the straight lines AE, C, is equal to AD, so that AE is also equal to C, by Book 1 Common Notion 1. Therefore, given the two straight lines AB, C, from AB the greater, AE has been cut off equal to C the less. Being, what it was required to do. Proposition 4. If two triangles have the two sides equal to two sides respectively, and have the angles contained by the equal straight lines equal, they will also have the base equal to the base, the triangle will be equal to the triangle, 
and the remaining angles will be equal to the remaining angles respectively, namely those which the equal sides subtend. Let ABC, DEF, be two triangles having the two sides AB, AC, equal to the two sides DE, DF respectively, namely, AB to DE, and AC to DF, and the angle BAC equal to the angle EDF. I say that the base BC is also equal to the base EF, the triangle ABC will be equal to the triangle DEF, and the remaining angles will be equal to the remaining angles respectively, namely those which the equal sides subtend, that is, the angle ABC to the angle DEF, and the angle ACB to the angle DFE. 4. If the triangle ABC be applied to the triangle DEF, and if the point A be placed on the point D, and the straight line AB on DE, then the point B will also coincide with E, because AB is equal to DE. Again, AB, coinciding with DE, the straight line AC, will also coincide with DF, because the angle BAC is equal to the angle EDF, hence the point C will also coincide with the point F, because AC is again equal to DF but B also coincided with E, hence the base BC will coincide with the base EF. For if, when B coincides with E, and C with F, the base BC does not coincide with the base EF, two straight lines will enclose a space, which is impossible. Therefore the base BC will coincide with EF, and will be equal to it. By Book 1 Common Notion 4. Thus the whole triangle ABC will coincide with the whole triangle DEF, and will be equal to it. And the remaining angles will also coincide with the remaining angles, and will be equal to them, the angle ABC to the angle DEF, and the angle ACB to the angle DFE. Therefore etc. Being, what it was required to prove. Proposition 5. In isosceles triangles, the angles at the base are equal to one another, and, if the equal straight lines be produced further, the angles under the base will be equal to one another. Let ABC be an isosceles triangle, having the side AB equal to the side AC. And let the straight lines BD, CE, be produced further in a straight line with AB, AC. By Book 1 Postulate 2. I say that the angle ABC is equal to the angle ACB, and the angle CBD to the angle BCE. Let a point F, be taken at random on BD, from AE the greater, let AG be cut off equal to AF the less. By Book 1 Proposition 3. And let the straight lines FC, GB be joined. By Book 1 Postulate 1. Then, since AF is equal to AG, and AB to AC, the two sides FA, AC, are equal to the two sides GA, AB, respectively, and they contain a common angle, the angle FAG. Therefore the base FC is equal to the base GB, and the triangle AFC is equal to the triangle AGB, and the remaining angles will be equal to the remaining angles respectively, namely those which the equal sides subtend, that is, the angle ACF to the angle ABG, and the angle AFC to the angle AGB. By Book 1 Proposition 4. And, since the whole AF is equal to the whole AG, and in these, AB is equal to AC, the remainder BF is equal to the remainder CG. But FC was also proved equal to GB, therefore the two sides BF, FC, are equal to the two sides CG, GB, respectively, and the angle BFC is equal to the angle CGB, while the base BC is common to them. Therefore, the triangle BFC is also equal to the triangle CGB, and the remaining angles will be equal to the remaining angles respectively, namely, those which the equal sides subtend. Therefore, the angle FBC is equal to the angle GCB, and the angle BCF to the angle CBG. Accordingly, since the whole angle ABG was proved equal to the angle ACF, and in these, the angle CBG is equal to the angle BCF, the remaining angle ABC is equal to the remaining angle ACB, 
and they are at the base of the triangle ABC. But, the angle FBC was also proved equal to the angle GCB, and they are under the base. Therefore, etc. What was to be shown? Proposition 6. If in a triangle two angles be equal to one another, the sides which subtend the equal angles will also be equal to one another. Let ABC be a triangle having the angle ABC equal to the angle ACB. I say that the side AB is also equal to the side AC. 4. If AB is unequal to AC, one of them is greater. Let AB be greater, and from AB the greater, let DB be cut off equal to AC the less. Let DC be joined. Then, since DB is equal to AC, and BC is common, the two sides DB, BC, are equal to the two sides AC, CB respectively. And the angle DBC, is equal to the angle ACB. Therefore, the base DC is equal to the base AB. And the triangle DBC, will be equal to the triangle ACB. The less, to the greater. Which is absurd. Therefore AB is not unequal to AC. It is therefore equal to it. Therefore etc. What was to be shown? 